if you're having a bad day and this prob this is one of the reasons I love all the prison channels. It's like, you can always say like, if you're having a bad day, like shit, man, at least I'm not looking at 10 years in prison right now. Like someone's waking up and they know that they're fucking stuck there. So it's like, I feel like just thinking to that helps. I use that to, you know, turn a bad day around. What's up, everybody? It is your boy, B, and I am back coming to you with a special guest. First time ever that I've had a guest on the show who has not been to prison. The dog, Cody Dunlap. Man, this guy has been on reality TV. He's famous on TikTok. He's an amazing entrepreneur online. Dude's got a hell of a story, guys. Um, Cody, what's up, man? It's great to have you on. How you doing today? Hey, man, I'll tell you, I've been on a lot of podcasts, maybe like 50 or so, not a massive amount, but this one is special. Like, this is one that I was I was really pumped up about, looking forward to uh, since we kind of, you know, direct messaged and scheduled it a couple of days ago. Big fan of your channel, big fan of you. Um, so, dude, I'm pumped to be here. Hey, dude, that's freaking extraordinary, man. I greatly appreciate it. You know, I remember all the way back when you first started messaging me and we started chopping it up, dude. You've been an inspiration to me from afar. I greatly appreciate it. You know, I, all the comments, all the um, just interactions that you and I have had. And it's funny, man, because I was just at the mall the other day and, I, you know, I sent you a message and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I passed by the uh, shoe store and, bro, every time now that I go to the mall, and I see a shoe store, immediately you, you pop up into my mind. I'm just like, I can't even look at these things the same anymore, bro. Um, and it's just funny because, you know, we've never met each other. But with the way technology is, um, you know, just like you ended up on a reality TV show because of how technology has changed the world and allows you access to any and everything. Um, it's just crazy. We've never met each other. But now, you, you know, you have changed my thinking just from watching you online and shit, man. And it's, it's absolutely crazy, man. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty awesome. And like just talking right now, we're talking as if like we've talked a ton, but really we've never had a conversation like this where we, we've obviously never met in person, but we've never been Skyped before. Uh, so it's pretty awesome. And uh, I think one thing that's really cool about it is you get to uh, make friendships on the internet that with people that have a lot more in common than you'd be able to if you were just limited to people that you crossed paths with in real life. Um, like I have tons of friends that hustle and have YouTube channels or resell or whatever. Um, but in real life, I really haven't met too many people that do kind of what we do with like YouTube channels and just trying to, just trying to use social media to, um, to inspire people. Like you said, I inspire you with like the stuff I'm doing. Um, I think you're one of the most inspirational people that I follow just because like, if you're having a bad day and this problem, this is one of the reasons I love all the prison channels. It's like, you can always say like, if you're having a bad day, like shit, man, at least I'm not looking at 10 years in prison right now. Like someone's waking up and they know that they're fucking stuck there. So it's like, I feel like just thinking to that helps. I use that to, you know, turn a bad day around. Yeah, that's what it is, man. It's all about motivation, inspiring people, encouraging people. Um, you know, it's just life, man. And technology has definitely changed that. And speaking of technology, now it's changed the world. You are oh. a reality show, bro, because of technology. You know what? I'm, I'm super interested in it. And how in the world were you able to get on a reality show? Let, listen, man, let me just keep it real. I'm 42. Reality shows, that shit's out the window for me. That It's oh, man. pretty much probably never would happen. But when I was younger, in my early 20s, I was always like, damn, I would like to go on one of these shows. So how in the heck did you end up on a reality show, man? Yeah, so I mean, reality TV had peaked probably like early thousands, like 2000 to 2005, I'd say. Um, I don't know when, you know, you were in your 20s, what year that was. Um, like, because, you know, a lot of it's timing. Like, when I'm in my early 20s, it, it's kind of on the decline. But I got on one. And uh, basically, man, I wanted to play college baseball. Didn't get the opportunity to just because I didn't, you know, no coaches gave me an offer. I, I was better than a lot of guys that ended up playing. And it was a frustrating situation. But it led to me enlisting in the 
um, army in the Texas army national guard. And when I was at basic training, this is why I like prison channels a lot too. Cause when you talk about, you know, just thinking or a lot of the shit you talk about doing in prison, like just deep thoughts and, you know, breathing and stuff like that. Like when you're at basic training or ranger school, like some of the places I've been, you know, you, you, you get into this zone where like you can think more creatively than you ever could like just day to day when you have an iPhone or whatever, all the distractions. I was like, dude, I'm going to get on a TV show when I get out of here. Like I set that goal for myself and I started plotting when I was there. And I don't know if you had anything that, that you executed like this, like right when you got out of prison. Um, but when I got out, I was 19 when I was, went through basic training. I just started, man, doing things to get myself closer to that goal, listening to a ton of podcasts, how to get on reality TV, um, started applying for shows and doing Skype interviews and stuff. And like, I didn't know how to talk on camera. I like, I had to like read books out loud in front of the mirror to get better at it. Um, and I ended up, you know, mastering the art of getting on TV, almost got on a dating show when I was 21 and ended up getting on stranded with a million dollars and winning that hoe being one of the finishers, uh, survival challenge, 40 day survival challenge in Fiji when I was 22. Um, and from that point it showed me, man, like there's no goal that is too far fetched to set. So like you get one life go for that shit, you know, like, don't let somebody tell you that you can't do something. And seriously, dude, like some of my friends would make fun of me for trying to get on shows. Um, my dad told me like, dude, stop wasting your time trying to get on TV shows. Cause you know, I was all in. So it was kind of like, dude, like that weirdo trying to get on TV shows. But <laughs> once I, once I got that check, man, and I don't want to spoil it for you, but it was over a hundred thousand. So once I got that six figure check, um, when I was 23, when the show aired, um, it was a, it was a moment where I was like, damn, like, you know, I need to believe in myself even when no one else is there. Even when I call my dad, like, Hey, I got this idea. He shoots it down. Like if you trust your gut, like go for it. Um, and that kind of set the tone for the, the next few years of my life. I'm 26 now, but it set the tone for like what will be the rest of my life as well. Wow, dude. That's amazing. Just listening to that. I'm just like, you know, I didn't know. I, I knew you, you had been on one, but I didn't really know any of the story, how you got on it. And you know what I like to tell people a lot of times is that um, your thoughts are some of the most critical things that are going to determine the outcome in your life. Whatever you sit around and you think about, whatever you project with your mind, whatever you envision, whatever you keep vibrating out into the universe, that's what's going to come back to you. So, I mean, if you sit there and you really think about something, you pour your all into it, you send out that type of thought and you send out that type of vibration, you believe in it, you start studying it, that's all you're thinking about, that's what's going to come back to you. But, you know, a lot of people, sometimes they don't realize that and they're just walking around blindly doing the same thing every single day, not putting any mindful thought into what they're going to do and they don't create any type of mindful executions towards success in life. So that's crazy, man, because I actually started learning that while I was in prison, sitting in solitary confinement that, you know, your mind is a powerful thing. And a lot of times we just, we don't realize the potential of it. We don't realize the power that we have with our mind. But if you want something, there's always going to be those naysayers, the people that try to shoot you down, the people that tell you you're not good enough. Oh, you can't make it. You can't do it. Blah, 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 blah. You know, they're always hiding in the bushes right over here. As soon as you're going to try to do something, they come out and shake the bushes and make a little bit of noise. But look, man, and when you want something, you can't listen to them people. I mean, obviously, if you're about to jump off a bridge or something and you think you're going to survive uh, jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge and people are telling you don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do dumb hey, shit. I believe one man did that, actually. He did. Didn't he? The he guy, did. The guy that person. does the speakers. Yeah. Yeah. But... I hear That's you, bro. Everybody and else is dying. It's like you've said, you said it before. You said it a few times on your channel, man. Like, it's, I think when you're talking about your experiences in prison where they can take everything away from you, but, you know, what's between the ears, your, your thoughts. So positive self-talk, you know, positive thoughts, because that's what you can control. And like, you know, like I, I said, when I was explaining kind of the, the route from when I decided to try to get on TV to, you know, doing it, um, 
I didn't get to play college baseball, but guess what? That was out of my control. So I couldn't sit there and be bitter over it. I was, I was, I was pissed off, but I used that, that, you know, pissed as motivation and it put a chip on my shoulder that sparked, you know, a great accomplishment um, for me. So I use those every day, man. You know, I consider, you know, when I'm held back, um, when I can't do what I want to do in a situation, whatever the reason is, even if it's a failure in life, I just try to look at it, examine it, learn from it and use it. If it's some type of fuel that fires my aggression, just get me going, or if it's just something that I can learn from, but I use all of that as a stepping block, man. Um, and then, you know what? We're always going to fall down. We're always going to fail. We're always going to get held back some type of way, but you can never, ever, ever give up on yourself because like you said a minute ago, we got one, just one life to live. And it's up to you to create the type of life that you want. There's no excuses, you know? You got to chase your goals, your dreams, your desires with fucking impunity. I like to tell people that too. Like, <laughs> impunity. Don't worry about it. Go after your shit, you know? If you sit around and you're thinking about it, thinking about it, and, and you don't ever act on it, you're going to end up one day in life looking back saying, damn, I wish I would have did this or did that. And you only got one life, man. You got to go for that shit, man. And that's what I love about you. I see you're going for it all the time. And you're actually teaching people. That's something else that I really, really like to see is that you're not just out there doing it and keeping it to yourself. You're actually sharing it with people and teaching people about it. And that's, you know, I love seeing that. Man, that, it, I don't know. It just makes me feel good. It's just natural to like, I've discovered this crazy thing where you can make massive amounts of money, like six figure income, yearly salary what people go to school for years to get for themselves, but you can do it just by, you know, flipping things on the internet, buying something for clearance in the store for $40 and selling it online for 80 and just rinse and repeat. When you get that $80, don't go blow it on a video game or something dumb. Reinvest that 80, turn it into 160, 320, just keep doubling that money. Um, and really you don't need to make a massive amount of money. You just need to keep your monthly expenses lower than your, what you're making each month and invest. You know, if you can invest $25 a month into your inventory, just build that thing up. And, um, I was flipping before I won the TV show. So I was flipping like when I was like, I mean, I flipped stuff when I was a kid, but really I got into it like more consistently from like 19 to, you know, 22 but I was just doing it to make like 500 bucks a month. And the reason looking back now, I can see the reason I wasn't going all in on it. Like I am today. I mean, you can see some of my inventory behind me. Like I'm pretty heavily into the, the flip game is because a lot of people hear, Oh, you're selling shit online. Like you must be broke or like tough times listing all this stuff on eBay. Um, and so I just kind of did it under the, the radar, but after winning the show, I, I realized, wow, who cares what people think? Like, if I know this is, if I know this makes sense, even if I look silly, I'm just going to go for it. Um, and then I, now I've tripled down on the shoes and, and it feels great, man. Like I'll wake up in the morning, most mornings I'll wake up and I'll be like, wow, I just made a sell, you know, $40 profit to start my day. Um, so it's, yeah. it's really an awesome thing. And the great thing about it is anyone can do it. You can come from any background. You don't have to be born into, you know, a wealthy family and have a perfect upbringing. Like anybody can buy stuff from the store, use their smartphone to list it on an app and profit the money. I mean, it'll take some learning up front, which is why people don't do it because they're lazy and they don't want to learn. Uh, but it doesn't take too high of an IQ to pull this off. You know what, man? Um, it, it's that word impunity. Just like he said, you I need to look th about what, huh? I need to look this word up, man. You're making me, you're making me feel stupid. Sam. Don't worry about what other people fucking think. Okay, when you there want to we do go. something, go for it, man. <laughs> if you sit around worrying about what somebody else thinks, you will never progress in life. That shit will hold you back from everything that you want, man. And, and you know what, I, to counter on, like you said, that people are uh, too, um, people don't want to learn. I think that people want to learn, but sometimes they don't know um, what direction to take. They need somebody to hold their hand. They need somebody to say, hey, man, come on, try this or look at this or listen to this. Um, and that's what's cool about social media is like 
um, I was telling you a little while ago, I've shared with numerous people, look, man, this dude right here is teaching people an easy hustle. I mean, it's not easy. Just like, okay, let me go over here and get this and I'm going to sell it. You got to do some research. You do have to learn, but it is a hustle. It is a flip game that anybody can do if you do the research and all the information is out there. You can watch YouTube all day and learn anything you want. People ask me about like cryptocurrency. How do you mine cryptocurrency? How do you uh, trade cryptocurrency? And that's some really technical shit. But if you want to know, <laughs> it's all on YouTube. But you got to put the time. You got to put in the effort. And it's not going to happen. You're not going to learn how to make a million bucks in a week. You got to put some energy into it. You got to put some effort into it. You know what? You might go out there and buy four or five pair of shoes that are not good sellers. But if you learn from that, and don't be afraid of making those mistakes, you will make it. You just gotta keep plugging away at it. And there's a ton of people like yourself that are out here sharing the knowledge with the people that need that little bit of guidance. Yeah, and so, some advice I'd give, like, you know, you mentioned in crypto and there's so many other things that you could do to, to make a second stream of income in addition to your job, but um, go with whatever you're most passionate about. I mean, spend some time, learn affiliate, look up affiliate marketing, Look up retail arbitrage, look up private label, Amazon FBA, like cryptocurrency, watch some YouTube videos, get a feel for what it is. And then whatever you are most excited about doing or most passionate about do for me, like I love the high of just going through all the shelves of shoes at Nike or Adidas and and I discover that shoe that's like over $50 profit a pair and then just loading up. Like I just get such a rush from that where it's like, damn, man, I just, I just made $400 projected profit like that. Um, like, <laughs> I love it. so I can do it over and over cause I'm addicted yeah. to that. Right. Yeah. Um, but for some people it's, they hate to shop. They hate to go to the mall that, you know, yeah. they don't like anything about. It, so maybe, those person go do something else where you, cause you, you know, for like, I've been doing this for years and I'm going to have to, to get to my goals, to get to where I want to be financially. I'm going to have to keep doing it every day. I'm going to have to ship something out or I'm going to have to, you know, invest a couple thousand dollars at the mall every week. Um, so if I didn't love it, the shit would not be fun. Um, so you got to find something that you really love to do as well, but there's a lot of easy hustles out there. That's the reason well, why I, I love your channel, man. Cause you're, you have that, that go getter mindset. Even when you were locked up, you were making money different ways. And I think, I think most of the prison channel guys, um, they have that entrepreneur mindset. I mean, they're building a YouTube channel, um, for more than just cause it's fun and to help people, but because you know, you can, you can get to a point where you're making a living off of YouTube channels too. So I know it's a lot of people's end game. There, I know some people that are doing YouTube prison channels right now that are making high six figures, literally right now, yeah. <laughs> like big, big, big money. You know, you can make money doing anything. And like you said a minute ago, you got to find out what's your passion because you know, what's mine. I, one of the biggest things that gets me excited, like when you go to buy shoes, is going to a car auction. Or it yeah, just there you go. Car. When I'm driving around and I see cars, I get excited when I see, oh, look at this one, look at that one. Literally, like I'm a kid in a candy store. I mean, I, I just went to the Mercedes dealership over the weekend, window shopping. I'm driving through the car lot, just looking at cars. <laughs> so it, cars for me, I love it. I love going. It's, it's a hustle for me. It's fun. I love the design of cars. I love getting in them, driving them. I, I like bidding on them. But the car game, it's it's a difficult game, man, because if you don't know cars, you can easily get in. Even if you do know cars, and I know a little bit about cars, one of the last cars that I bought that I really lost on was a BMW. And I know better than buying these cars, the older BMWs, because... Uh, once they're like at a hundred thousand miles, problems come. And when they have problems, they cost big money. And I bought a uh, six series, two door six series at the auction. Turned out to be a bad one, man. I lost like 2,500 bucks on that car. So, you know, it's gotta be about what's your passion. You know, you can't just go out there. There is a ton of things, you know, that you can teach people or people can learn online, but it's, it's really critical to pursue what you really, really love. What gets you motivated? What gets you excited? What makes you like, I could do this, but it doesn't feel like I'm working. You know, and I, I'm sure that's how it is when you're out buying shoes. You don't feel like you're at work. Exactly. You're doing what you love. If you calculated how much I make an hour, it'd be ridiculous. It could be like 
it might be a hundred bucks an hour, something ridiculous. And I've learned a lot. Like I didn't start out that way. It's that's, this is like five years into it. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, some people ask me like, Oh, well, that's a job. You're packaging your shoes up. I'm like, dude, I, I spend like 15, 20 minutes packaging a day. And like, it's like, it's totally worth the $50 profit to put a shoe in a box and tape it shut. Like, damn, that's, man. But people are looking what? for excuses not to, you know, to justify their laziness at that point. But. They are. And the people that are saying that are often sitting back saying, damn, I wish I could be doing that. I wish I was packaging up shoes or I wish I was selling some coffee because, you know, I sell coffee too, right? So the people that are saying that, they're, they're really over there and they're the ones that are hiding in the bushes that are just like wishing they could be doing what you're doing. And then they got some negative shit to say. And you just got to ignore those people, brush them off, laugh at them. Maybe you reply to them sometimes and tell them what a dumbass they are. Uh, but, you know. I do, I've been known to do that. <laughs> I've seen some of your comments. I use it. I think some people are kind of like, maybe they think it's get because I'm posting the hate comments that they're getting to me, but I'm kind of just laughing at them. Um, and for me, I'm able to like, if you're like, if your haters are impacting you in a negative way, that's not a good thing, of course. But for right. me, the negative comments and the hate almost motivates me. Like if you go to my Instagram, a couple of posts back um, from now, uh, one of the top comments on my, my viral TikTok, my, my top TikTok post was, oh, Curry's aren't going to sell on the GOAT app. The GOAT app is where I'm, I was selling Curry basketball shoes on this app, the GOAT app. It's a sneaker app. And um, it's funny because that's one of the top shoes that I flip, but people, I guess, just don't know because it's not about what I like. Like, I would never wear Curry basketball shoes, but if I can make money flipping them, then I'm, it's about what you know the customer wants but I, I posted that comment and then like 10 pairs of curries that sold one day when I had a really big day that was hilarious man but um <laughs> so I use the hate to fuel me sometimes um hey how's the how's the the um car resale hustle going did that that bad flip kind of set you back or are you still proud no, so. overall <laughs> no I bought another bad flip right after that another BMW oh so. damn bro I bought a, um, so that was a six series two door. And then right after that, I bought a uh, four door three series, immaculate, beautiful car, fun to drive. Felt great when I left the uh, dealership. Come to find out it had bad fuel injectors. Bro. <laughs> two and a half weeks to figure out what it was. I ended up breaking even on that car. And it got to the point where, um, I put so much money into just figuring out what it was and then the end fix where I was like, man, I should just keep this car because I love driving it. Um, real fun car. Right. Um, and then um, I've just bought a few more cars, but I've just had so much going on with this coffee business and getting it off the ground, putting a lot of research, um, doing a lot of lab testing. Um, there's just been so much that I've had to put into the um, coffee, the CBD infused coffee that I haven't had much time to do anything else. I mean, I have my dealer license. I can go anytime. I just haven't had the time to do it, man. I've been itching to go back out there. Um, I, I, just haven't been. I would say if anyone's, if anyone's trying to pick what hustle between cars and shoes, I've never lost money on shoes. You know, the oh, worst, yeah. ca the worst case. So when I buy them, they're immediately worth like twice as much as, as I buy them for, um, or else I don't purchase them. And then the worst case is if they'll take like six months to double your money, but six months, a hundred percent return on investment. That's you're not beating that. So you obviously don't invest money that you're going to need to pay rent with that in a couple right. weeks, you know, ease into it $20 at a time. Um, but shoes, maybe flip shoes and then start flipping cars with the profits once you've built it up. Um, yeah. But man, it's fun. No matter what you're doing, at least you're being productive. At least you're using your dollars to work for you. Um, and ultimately, like my goal with, with like finances and like making money is to ultimately buy myself, like get to early retirement. So I buy myself more time. And I think that's one thing that like you with your experience being in prison and probably just as an entrepreneur, like you understand the value of time. And once you understand that time is more valuable than money, it, it like unlocks a lot of thoughts in your mind where you start to realize, okay, now we're playing the game of money, not because money is everything, but because money is a tool that can buy me more time with my kids or with my wife or traveling. 
Yeah. Because mo- most people that are trapped in a nine to five, man, they only get a couple of hours of free time each night on, on week on Monday to Friday. And that's five out of seven days of their freaking life, man. So we all have the same amount of time, right? And if you could ever figure out a way to sell physical time to somebody, actual time, you'll be an immediate gazillionaire. You cannot even count the money, right? But what you're, what you're actually able to buy is time freedom. And it's, that's what a lot of people don't have. Like you just said a minute ago, they're, they're on the grind. They're on, and you know, I, I look at people all the time that are just like um, cows being herded and they're just, I agree. Huh? I agree with this, bro. I, know, I like it. Bro, I like where it's going. Here's how, why I came up with this too. And I mean, I've heard people talk about the same thing, but I was locked up in 1998 uh, for sales of cocaine and they put me on this work farm um, and I was on a cattle crew and we had acres and acres of field that we just had to go out and tend to. We had to go feed the cattle. We had to herd them from one place to another. And one thing that I could tell you is we would go out here with a tractor, with a trailer that had like potatoes or watermelons in it. And the cattle knew that we're coming with food and wherever we're going, all these cattle would get in a line and just come following that food, right? And that's what it is like when I see people every day that are just on the grind, making it by just week to week. They're doing some shit that they don't love. They're miserable. They're sad. They're angry. Oh, I don't have enough time. I'm bit, you know, all this bull crap, right? And they just have these blinders on. And it's like they're just cattle being herded around from one place to another, just chasing food. And it's like, man, take your blinders off build something more than what you're doing, step out of the box, step out of line with, don't follow everybody else, you know, go out here and make something you can do just like you're saying, you don't have to quit your job. You can learn what Cody is doing right now on the side and just add that, but you got to be real. You have to be real mindful of like, if you want to do that successfully, say that somebody wanted to start out and do what you're doing, flipping shoes on the side. You can't go and put a hundred bucks into it and take your profit, take your hundred bucks bucks back and go to the mall and buy you some clothes or go buy some other bullshit or go out to dinner and spend all your money. You have to keep that money separate of all your other money. Actually, you know, keep track of what you made, keep track of what you invested, reinvest it. And if you do it that way and you, you know, even if you did it on the side and did it slowly, you would be stepping out of line from all the other masses that are just following each other around like blind cattle. <laughs> it's, it's funny, man, that comparison. Cause I call the, those people jellyfish, like jellyfish in the ocean. Like you think about yeah. the ocean, you got sharks, like people that are going out and getting it. And yeah. then you have jellyfish where that it just goes wherever the water pushes it. And that's kind of how, that's how some people live their life. And it's crazy. Cause like you get one life. Why are you just, why are you just not, why are you not doing something big, like trying to accomplish something, taking a, a couple risks? I mean, why not? Um, but it's funny, the comparison and um, talking about like starting out, that's a great way to do it. Separate your bank account. So for me, I opened a separate bank account. So separate debit card. And the way my wife did it, cause she was a little bit more, um, you know, afraid of risk, <laughs> I guess, than I was, is she just put a hundred dollars in. And she only put $100 in and she bought like five items for 20 bucks at like Ross or Marshall's to flip. And when they sold, she'd reinvest. So that money is like, she puts a hundred bucks in and that hundred dollars is gone. She, that's not her hundred anymore. That's going to build up over here. And then she lived, you know, month to month, like she normally did. And every time it sold, you know, separate bank accounts, man, I think it turned into 3000 after one year doing like using my techniques just flipping stuff obviously she had an advantage you know me helping her so much um whereas most people will just watch my youtube videos and learn and message me on instagram but that's crazy dude a hundred to three thousand in one year like damn bro yeah that's cool yeah i love it retail arbitrage i love that i think it's amazing amazing, uh technique you know i'm doing a video with a guy tomorrow that um just like me he's an ex ex felon um, and he's now doing a flipping and I told him about you. I'm like, dude, you got to go over here and check Cody out. Right. Man, I, got, I got to check that dude out. Is he putting out content yet or not yet? He, he, um, he just started doing some videos, but one thing that he's doing is really cool. He's buying used tennis shoes. I mean, okay. he doesn't, and he's cleaning them. He's, he's cleaning them and then he's hydro dipping them. 
So he's hydro dipping them in like uh, Louis Vuitton or Gucci, some type of, you know, uh, uh, apparel okay. brand. Um, and dude, his work looks phenomenal. But, you know, okay. when he sells them, you know, he's, he's hydro dipped them with the, um, you know, the, the brand on them. Um, and it looks cool. But I was like, dude, that's cool that you can do it that way. But have you considered, you know, follow Cody? learn how to buy shoes at basically half price. Now you've got a brand new pair of like Air Force One or whatever, because he does a lot of Air Force Ones. Um, and then hydro dip them. Now you're getting the money for custom, the custom work you do. Plus you're getting the shoe at half price or whatever you're able, whatever discount you're able to get it at. Um, but I'm doing a video with him tomorrow as well. And it's just cool because he came home from prison and he didn't make an excuse. He was like, I'm gonna figure out a way to make it happen. And he's just constantly flipping things. He flips cars on the side. Um, and he, he hydro dips other things like car parts, car rims. Um, but he just makes it happen, you know? Yeah, I would say, like, so one, one thing I think of is, like, he, the way I do it is so quick. And if you calculate the dollar, I'm, like, how much money I make per hour is so much higher because it's so much more efficient. But what he does sounds like a lot of fun. So it's like... Uh, you know, that's what he enjoys doing and he's making money doing something he enjoys too. Um, but you said, you said in there, like he doesn't, he figures out a way, right? Like he gets out of prison. He doesn't make excuses, figures out a way. I feel like if you, and I can relate to that. Cause like coming out of, I feel like being trapped in basic training, even though, man, obviously it's not comparable. It's, it's such a short amount of fucking time compared to like, you know, the time a lot of guys have, have put in in prison like just losing all like all the privileges you have, like the ability to choose what you're going to do. Like you wake up, someone tells you when you're going to eat, someone tells you what you're doing today. They tell you every fucking thing. So you just shut your mind off and just follow the routine. Um, it just makes you like, I feel like it gives you such an edge. So people that have, have been to prison, like, yeah, you have some disadvantages. Like it's going to be harder to get a fucking job at a lot of places with that on your record, but your actual life experience is the advantage you have because you know what it's like to fucking have nothing. Whereas a lot of these, you know, privileged people that have never gone through the shit you've gone through, they don't have the experience to know how bad things can get. So the fucking Starbucks barista makes their order wrong. They think they're having a bad day. Like, <laughs> you know, you're not having a bad day because you know what a real bad day is. So yeah, you, have, you, you have such an edge. You have such an advantage there with your experience, you know, having to embrace the suck and go through the shit. Now it's like time to execute. And it's cool to see you executing and all the other guys, um, you know, in the pr prison channel, YouTube community, um, because it's like that no excuse mindset and, it, and it's crazy because it's like shit dude like like you think like of how successful big herc is like if he had never gone to prison you know he may have what if he lived just an average life i think a lot he's a go-getter and he would figure some shit out but it's like in many ways that that catapulted him to where he is now which is pretty awesome like i, I feel like the impact he has on people like think of how many people he hopefully prevents from going to prison that may have gone down that path if they hadn't started getting into his channel and stuff, you know, and same thing for you, hopefully. Yeah, he, dude, him and a lot of the other big channels have touched people around the entire world. I, I mean, myself, I get people messaging me from around the world. Just last night, I was talking to somebody in Ireland. Um, I'm laying in bed. Somebody's messaging me from Ireland, thanking me for my videos. So the dudes that are like got a half million subscribers, a million subscribers, they're touching people all over the place. Their touch is infinite, you know? And you're absolutely right. If he would have never went to prison, who knows if he would have ever created the platform. I mean, it obviously would not be the same thing that he's created. Um, and, you know, I tell people all the time, I'm where I am today. And, you know, if I had an opportunity to go back, obviously I would want to make better choices because the choices ultimately led me to prison. But I don't think I would change my life experience simply because at this point, you know, I'm happy in life. I enjoy my life, but I know that I'm giving so much back to people. I know that I'm helping people. I know that I'm just what I, I was always like an optimistic, very happy person, but sitting in that confinement, I mean, I learned a way of thinking that was inside of me that I didn't understand, but I began to understand it. And then I learned how to use that to actually control all of my stuff. 
thoughts. And when you learn to control your thoughts, it doesn't matter what the hell is going on around you. So um, like you said earlier, somebody goes to the uh, Starbucks and they think they're having a bad day because the barista, you know, gives them the drink wrong or whatever, right? <clears throat> when you learn to control all your thoughts, man, your life can be as peaceful and as happy as you want it to be. And I just know that even though I had that inside of me, I might not have ever learned to harness that that type of thinking in a way that I'm able to give back to people with it. So for me, my platform's nowhere near like these other guys, but I know that as long as I keep putting into it, it's going to grow. And I know that what I've learned and what I do with my life is going to touch people. Like, I, If I went back and changed it all, there's no way that I'd be able to touch the type of people, as many people in the type of way that I am now. So honestly, I wouldn't trade it in, man. I hate my situation, my actual situation of why I went to prison because there's somebody that ultimately lost their life. Um, <clears throat> and that sucks. There's not a day that goes by, even though it was an accident, I was completely innocent of it. Um, it still sucks because, you know, that person cannot get their life back. And, you know, it's heartbreaking for me. Um, but my life experience of going to prison, what I learned in there, I wouldn't change it, man, because I really thoroughly enjoy just sharing my story with people and knowing that it's encouraging people, you know? Oh yeah, definitely, man. We're getting, we're getting pretty deep here, pretty philosophical. Um, your YouTube and not to change the subject a little bit, your YouTube, man, is kind of starting to take off. I feel like the jump from like 12 K to 17 K has been pretty quick, right? Yeah, no doubt. It has for sure. You got a visitor. No, that's my cat running around the room. Actually, uh, I saw I saw that too. I saw that too. The screen it looked like a ghost or something. So that's a little it closet. Looks like somebody, it looks there better like not there, there better not be anyone coming out of there. Else, I'm in a bad position. <laughs> but no, I think she's. Oh, dude, this is all like good. Messing with shoe boxes and stuff. <laughs> hey, on something completely different, man. I had a house uh, in Florida. So when I was like 20, 21, 22, I had bought a house and like, I almost had it paid for right before I went to prison. Um, all from drug proceeds, obviously. So I was into flipping things back in the day too. I was flipping a lot of crack. Um, not a good thing to be flipping. Make but, a, lot, a lot more money, but a lot more risk. Way more risk. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, and you know what? It ruins people's lives, man. And ultimately, yeah. people are going to make the decision to do drugs if they want to, right? That's not on the person that's selling them. But I would never involve myself in that type of shit again. Um, looking back, it, it was a just bad decisions. Anyways, I had this house, right? <clears throat> and um, they said, the people that um, lived in it prior and the people that lived around it said, man, people see spirits or, you know, the house is haunted. Somebody died in there and a lady did die in there, right? She died in the kitchen one night, dude, I'm standing downstairs and I just felt like there was this presence up, up the stairs. And I look up there, bro. When I look up the stairs, I seen this silhouette of a man standing there with his arms up and his head down. And it was just a dark silhouette, bro. I got so freaked out. I ran and kicked the front. We had a, um, like a screen door. I kicked the front door, broke it open, right. boom. I kicked the door off, break the door. And I I'm telling my wife and my daughter, everybody out of the house. I was trying to light the house on fire. <laughs> Just to burn the house down. I'm like, we got to get out of here immediately. Oh, now were you now were you on any drugs at this time? Oh, no, I didn't do drugs. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Dude, yeah. that is, man, I don't, yeah, I'm, not a, I'm not about that stuff. I know there's. You can get into the YouTube videos on that, on ghosts and stuff. Most of it's probably fake on YouTube, but the TV shows. And, yeah, I've never really met. I've never really messed with, had an experience with that or seeked it out. I know some people go hunting. Man, that gave me chills just, just listening to you say that, though. Dude, it still, it still freaks me out just thinking about it. It's like, that was one of the scariest damn things. The scariest thing in my life was um, almost drowning when I escaped from prison. But that's like the close second right there. That was like a super spooky thing. <laughs> well, you got you got pinned uh, in like a river or something. <laughs> oh, I, how'd you well, almost drown? No, I, I escaped from prison, and uh, while I was running, and the cops were chasing me, I was um, running for like an hour and a half straight, climbing over shit, crawling, yeah. jumping over fences, dodging bushes. You, police are chasing me. The, the prison police but like um, how what was it like just being fatigued i mean obviously i yeah. listened 
obviously I've watched the YouTube videos of the story, but I'm just, I just forgot the part where he almost drowned. Dude, it was like, a, uh, I was saying, I almost said a year and a half. It was an hour and a half <laughs> of running. So like, you were just beat to shit. Like you were physically done. I was toast. But, and I'm you were trying to, sw- how, how far were you trying to swim? If I had to measure it, it'd be about 150 feet, probably from one side to the other. Um, That's pretty far when you're. It's it's far, but and I mean, so you didn't, you didn't. <laughs> I'm assuming you didn't. You weren't like in endurance shape, like you weren't. Oh no, I was. Uh, yeah, I had great endurance. Excellent. Okay, so you were. Okay, but there's a difference. You can run the track all day, and that's what yeah. I was doing. And I worked out every day, ran the track. Okay, all day. that's one thing. You can run track, you know, that's no big deal. When you're running for your life, when you're climbing over things and crawling under and dodging and you're, you're in a uh, jungle damn near in Florida, it's like way out in the woods. You know, you're getting thorn bushes that are hitting you, tree limbs, and you hear cops behind you. You hear a helicopter, you hear dogs, that type of stuff. That's way different. So your adrenaline's pumping really hard. Your heart's pumping fast. So you can't, you're going to get fatigued in a different way than just running the track. Yeah, track. true. Really you get, right? with the adrenaline, you get fatigued way quicker. And yeah. man, that's crazy. I mean, honestly, that experience, like when I was listening to the story and, you know, going, you know, you listen to your story, you put yourself in that position, you're thinking like, damn, and what it tacked on an extra 13 months or an extra year. They tacked on an extra year and a half. <sighs> Well, of course it's, it's it's just like you said a second ago like if you could go back it'd be nice to not have to do that extra year and a half but i mean having that story man is is like the coolest story that i think one of the coolest stories that can be told you know <laughs> pulling off so, an escape i mean you didn't pull it off fully but you pulled it off i mean you were out there it qualifies it wasn't, as um, a, it wasn't fully successful i definitely got away of course um and so originally, if with good time, I would have done eight and a half years on a 10-year sentence. Total time that I'd done was 11 years. So, so I, you're I, not. Have there been, have you, you would probably know, have there been successful escapes? Uh, yeah, there's been successful escapes, but not many they, at all. These, these people just flee the country and disappear, I guess. Yeah, they're the just route. never seen again, right? <clears throat> but we actually were looking that up prior to escaping. And we knew that the capture rate was like an 80, 90 percent, some shit, some super high percentage. But we were like, we don't give a damn. We're going anyways. <laughs> so, you got to try to be uh, the 10 percent, man, the 1 percent of the 1 percent. So are, is there any like documentaries or stories on people that have successfully escaped? I mean, I guess they couldn't really hit them up. They'd get in trouble if they, they got to yeah, stay I, hiding. Right. Yeah. You'd have Cause to it'd be cool. Because, man, it'd be cool to hear the stories you know but i guess they can't tell so you getting caught and serving that year and a half now you can tell the stories you don't have to worry um that's interesting dude that was actually two and a half so it went from eight and a half to 11 but what happened was they added a year and a half on of time but they took my good time away from me as well so it was that was two and a half extra years then yeah i ended up doing two and a half extra so oh bro (laughs) Yeah, I, and, I'm a, and I'm uh, a cool. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, man. And two and a half of that I did in solitary confinement, locked the door right. locked in the room by myself, two and a half years. Now, do you think that may? Because hearing from the stories, I feel like the stories you tell about that experience is where you mastered the the art of like brain control. Um, do you think you took your skill, like your mental skill, to the next level going through that no. BS? Absolutely. Or was it, or was it already there by that time? No, No, it wasn't already there. Um, Okay. You know, I I was definitely learning, definitely growing just from the experience of going to prison that it does one of two things. Either it lets you grow or it it gives you the opportunity to grow and you're either going to take that opportunity or you're going to just become a worse person. So I was already growing. I was already learning. I was becoming a different person just from that experience. But, the day they captured me and they locked me in that cell, it was on to a whole other level of learning and thinking and growing uh, from that point on. And that's where really the major uh, pivotal point of my thinking began to change. Because prior to that, you know, even though I'd gone through the experience of get, 
I, I sat in a county jail fighting a murder charge for two and a half years, which is an excruciatingly uh, exhausting mental just fight. Yeah. Um, and then you're dealing with the physical aspect of it every day. It's a concrete jungle where you locked in a cell with other dudes that are facing 50 years, hundred years, life sentences, and they're pissed off all day long. So, you know, it's just, it, it's a battle of extremes every single day. So all of that, that experience was allowing me, giving me the opportunity to change and to grow and become stronger. But when they locked that cell behind me and they said, you won't be getting out of here. And for a while I was in a cell that had no sunlight, no sunlight penetrated the cell, no window. Um, that's where everything began to change. And what, what, you know, what ultimately happened was I began to read, I began to think, I began to meditate. I began, I had a neighbor next to me that's actually on death row right now. He's waiting to be executed. Um, he was a professional boxer at one time. His name is Dwight, e uh, Dwight Eaglin. Um, <clears throat> I spoke to him a lot through the vent. And he is one of the most well-spoken, most intelligent, wisest people that I ever got the uh, opportunity to talk to. And I learned a lot from that guy. <clears throat> Um, he put me up on this course called City Yoga Program. And through that course and other things that I was reading, other things that just help you empower your mindset, um, what happened was I went up, underwent a mindful evolution. And through that mindful evolution, like you were talking about, I learned to control my thoughts. I learned to control what I project, um, just what I wanted in life. And it completely changed everything for me in life, even to the point that when I got out of uh, confinement, you know, they classified me as um, higher risk. I wasn't allowed to work around any staff members. I could not even, they wouldn't even give me a job. I just had to do my time, which was cool. But <clears throat> through what I had learned, uh, even doing the type of time that where they sent me to the worst prisons, I was around the worst type of people to be around, the people that were in trouble a lot. Um, it allowed me to do my time better than most people are doing time uh, in prison. Um, so all the experience combined, man, definitely uh, changed my entire life for the better. And honestly, I just wouldn't trade it for anything. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, man. But that's like, those are words spoken from someone who comprehends the positives in such a negative situation. Cause it's like, it gives you an edge. Now, now you're, you're, now you're like, you know, a weapon as far as like accomplishing goals because you mastered that mental side. Um, one thing that I'm curious too that I, I thought of earlier, I didn't ask you luckily when we're talking off the, off the, uh, the record. Um, like when you look back on the fact that you escaped and then it, it cost you more time, do you look back and think like, damn, what the hell was I thinking? Like what a stupid decision. Or do you comprehend like, Nah, I would have fucking gone for it again. I, I feel like it's similar to like when we were talking about starving also before, before this, where like when you're starving, like you'll do some crazy shit to get food. Like, was it like that where you like, when you're fucking locked up, you'll do some dumb shit to get out of there. Um, do you look back and think like, man, I was in a bad state of mind. Like I made a, that was not a very, like, I wouldn't make that decision now. Yeah. So of all the dumb decisions I've made, and uh, I've made a, a, an immense amount of bad decisions, dumb decisions, decisions that most people will never even make. I've been in a lot of situations. I've been in shootouts with people on the street where they're shooting at me, I'm shooting at them, bullets are ricocheting off the shit. Um, I've been in a lot of just neighborhood fights. Uh, I, I've just been in a lot, a lot, a lot of crazy shit. Even a lot of shit that I haven't talked about on, on YouTube as a young kid, just being a maniac, right? And <clears throat> That escape was absolutely the dumbest damn decision that I ever made. Looking back, I still say, what I know what I was thinking. I was pissed off that I was in prison. The judge, the day he sentenced me, Cody. <clears throat> I know, man. The line they gave me, you. I, I, this will put, replay in my fucking head every day. This man looked at me and he said, it's clear to the court that what happened was an accident. Had you went to trial, no criminal jury would have found you guilty. <laughs> okay. You just said, I'm innocent. He said, but because you didn't come and tell us what happened, I'm going to give you 10 years to think about it. When he told me that, I was like, dude, I don't need to think about it. I've been thinking about it for years, and you just gave me 10 years to think about it right after yeah, you told dude. me I was innocent. So I'm like, at all costs, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of this shit. I'm not going to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody gets it, 
hardly See. anybody escaped successfully. Um, it was a dumb decision. I had family, my daughter, my daughter was extreme. You know, my daughter wouldn't talk to me for years. She wrote me a letter and said, I think she wrote it to me, or maybe she told me when I finally did see her. But basically what she was saying was, if you would have escaped and got away, I would have never talked to you. She would have had nothing to do with me. And um, it's just, it, it's heartbreaking to hear my daughter tell me that, or you know, know that she was thinking that. Um, but at the time, to be honest, all I was thinking about was myself. I was like, I'm getting out of this shit. I don't want to be here. I'm mad that I'm here. I got to go. Um, but even with that, yes, I would not go back and do it again. You know, if I went back and had to do all my time over. No, I would not escape. I would immerse myself deep into education, deep into just becoming a bigger, better version of me every single day. Right. I got you. Cause when I, man, when I first, when I was watching your story, uh, by that point I was like, what the hell do you mean you escaped, bro? You had done 85%. Like, what? <laughs> like that's a, you know, that doesn't make sense. Um, but that's interesting to, to hear. I'm glad I remembered to ask that. Um, yeah, I, I, man, I was going to say something, but I forgot what I was going to say. Shit. You know what, man, we got a lot of time, bro. And, um, we can always jump back on. Uh, you're welcome anytime to come on, anytime to chop it up, you know? It's bro, bro, I got it. 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 No, it. when <laughs> it just pisses me off so much because that judge, dude, just the, just the power trip, you know, just fucking someone's life over just because whatever mood they're in that day, it's so frustrating, man. I can't, I can't even try to imagine, you know, the, how pissed off you were there. And then another thing I feel like I have a problem with is like, um, you know, different, like, I guess different levels of like education, like educated people in society and different levels of money. Like the court system definitely caters to people who are more well-educated and have more money, um, which we've talked a lot about money and entrepreneurship. Like that's one of the things that motivates me to get to where I have, you know, a ton of money um but it's it's fucked up man because you know there's people out there that have money for lawyers and they know how that shit works and if they were in your situation they could have just been like oh yeah we'll fight this real like it's nothing and be on with it whereas you you know you kind of had to ignore it when it was still there and then come back and ultimately it's the judge used that against you yeah, no doubt, man. You know, for a while I was pissed off at that dude. And I still, you know, when I talk about it, it sounds like I'm pissed off. But at this point, I'm not even mad at him, man. Life goes on. But what I do, I do have a problem with this, right? <clears throat> Social media has exposed a lot of wrongdoing on the part of the cops. You know, every day we see videos where cops are beating people, where they're wrongfully arresting people, where they're just harassing people, where they are killing people every day. Every day this shit happens, right? And now there's become this huge disdain for police officers. And I know that we need police officers and I know that the vast majority of them are good people, but a lot of the bad is becoming exposed and is changing public opinion toward them, right? But what is a bigger problem than that and it's not exposed and a lot of people don't even realize it is the, the detectives that you don't see that are behind the scenes that either plant information or withhold information. And then you have the prosecutors. In fact, in my case, you know, the prosecutor told my judge, the prosecutor said, if he would have came and told us what happened at the very beginning, I would have never prosecuted him. <laughs> how does that change anything? You're still prosecuting me just because I didn't come and tell you at the very beginning. Well, how about prosecuting me for what I was actually guilty of, which was leaving the scene of an accident involving a death. But they are allowed to prosecute with immunity they never get held accountable for ruining people's lives and then the judges that sentence people knowing these people are innocent do not get held accountable and i just put out a video about this guy named ricky jackson did 39 years yeah. in prison completely innocent completely and the detective in that case it just came up well it came out a few years ago but after 39 years it comes out that the detective knew that the kid they, 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 the kid they made testify, they told the kid, look, you're a kid, you're too young to go to jail. If you don't go in here and tell them what you told us already, 
because he told them, hey, I, I didn't really see it. If you don't go in here and tell them, we're going to take your parents to jail. They're telling this little kid that. Yeah, he's 12, 12 years old. 12 years old, and they sent a man to prison for 30. The man was sentenced to death. And luckily, he got that commuted to life, and, but he did 39 years. N none of them people are going to be held accountable. And they only gave the guy $2.6 million. That equates to $7 or something per hour. Somebody in my comment section was like, bro, that's not $7 per hour. It is when you add up 24 hours a day. He got paid $7 and some change per hour, 24 hours a day for being in prison. What the? Are you kidding me? You can't repay this man no amount of money. <laughs> yeah, brutal. man, it's uh, it's brutal, man. Like that's it's crazy. Like I watched that video before we hopped on here. Um, it's cr that's a fucking crazy situation, dude. And yeah. I was thinking about it too. I don't know if you thought of this, but like you think about how many crimes are committed, how many people are thrown in prison, and like there's gonna be some that are false, like actually like like thrown in prison when they didn't commit it. Like it's just that many numbers. There's going to be some that get fucked up. That's like one of the worst things that can happen to you, man. Like that, man, that's, that's high up on the, on the worst thing that can happen to you list where you get a life sentence. He got a life sentence and fucking didn't even do it. It's crazy, dude. It's brutal, man. It's sad because I mean, how many people have been executed? How many people have already died in prison that were completely innocent? And okay, it's it's one thing if the man's innocent and the people prosecuting him and the judge literally truly believed it from like evidence that they have that this is our man. But the, the biggest crime is when they know or they hide evidence or they plant evidence and they just totally come up with this false thing just for a conviction because you know what a prosecutor works off of is a conviction rate at all costs conviction. That's all they care about. Man, it's crazy, dude. Like these people are just fucking animals, man. Like, cause I could, I just don't have the heart to fuck someone over for any, whatever their motivations are, you know, they're getting money for it. I mean, that's what you're saying. Like the more people they convict, they get more money off of it. Oh, or no. well, it allows them to eventually move up. A lot of them are shooting to become a judge, which know, is like, dude, go like, back and look at their conviction rate. Like, dude, can you imagine like fucking someone's life over just so you can climb the ranks, like in your no. profession? Like, that's insane, dude. Yeah, like, how imagine. big? Like, how big of a piece of shit? But there are there's tons of people out there, man, that are just there's worth, tons. just worthless, man. Like and everywhere, everywhere you look, every neighborhood, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from. Like there's people that stab seven people in the back and not even feeling guilty about it. It's, it's crazy, man. It's, it's absolutely brutal. Man, it's I hate to talk, brutal. man, I hate to talk about all this negativity. Um, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of positivity though. We hit a lot of positive things in here. I think that's one yeah. thing with the, you know, you always got to tell prison stories. I mean, that's, that's how you built your channel. And that's what's, you know, that's what brought me to it and brought everyone to it. But it is cool, man. I'm like, I'm really thankful that you had me on and we were able to talk about, you know, a little entrepreneurship and things like that. I never would have thought I'd be a guest on a prison, on a prison channel. Prison. <laughs> it's not a, not a prison channel anymore though. This is just, this is just your life now, but it's the life channel, man. And you know, when you just said that we were talking about the negative, right? I don't mind talking about the negative because what I like to tell people yeah. is no matter how negative it is, no matter what type of pressure you're dealing with, if it seems like it's completely dark and there's no such thing as complete darkness, you just, there's no, you can't have 100% complete darkness, no matter how bad it is, no matter how dark it seems, there's light. And that light is positivity. But sometimes you're just not aware of it. Sometimes you got to look around and look for it. No matter how bad a situation is, there's always positive. There's always light. But you got to look for it, man. And you can always bounce back. That dude needs to find your channel and subscribe. That's what it is, man, for sure. Absolutely. He, need, he needs to get himself an Instagram page and start indulging in the free world. Man, what a transition he has ahead yeah. of him now. No doubt, man. <laughs> Cody, it's a pleasure, dude. I love having you on, man. It's fun chopping it up with you. Um, great time, man. Yeah, I got to go to bed, man. It's late here in Texas it's now. Where, where, where? This is the YouTube grind, guys. Like, if y'all don't know, if you never made YouTube videos, I mean, and if you check out my channel, I only got a couple uploads. There's going to be more, but it's a grind, man. So I appreciate you 
for uploading as consistently as you have because I enjoy watching it, you know, on my, my commute to work and everything. Hell yeah, man. I greatly appreciate you watching. And check it out, guys. If you haven't already done it, go over there and check out all of Cody's social media. The man is a famous reality TV star. Um, he's got a huge TikTok following. He's got amazing Instagram, inspirational. Uh, he teaches you a lot of things, and he's just a cool-ass cat, you know, as it is. So definitely in the description of this video, go check him out, subscribe to everything, follow him, and uh, show some support, show some love. And if you want to learn something, he's definitely the one to go watch. Thank <laughs> you.